does the person you are with encourage you to read you have to ask what does he bring for me roses or books if someone has a stake in making you better that person will push you towards books books are what we all need So sir, my next question to you is, since you are an expert on hundreds of scriptures, but your greatest emphasis is on Bhagavad Gita, why is it that you say studying Gita is so important for leading a life of awareness and one-pointedness? Because of the setting of the Gita. Hmm? Yes, sir. It's a... the real life practical situation that uh, most people will find easy to resonate with identify with you see purely academically Huh? Yeah. purely from the point of view of uh, philosophical elucidation there are uh, books scriptures that are probably uh, clearer than the bhagavad gita but when it comes to utility an impact there's hardly anyone that exceeds the gita and that impact is because of the of the setting of the gita the fact that something very worldly is at stake hmm the fact that the disciple is very reluctant these things make the gita appear like uh, something set uh, in a household kind of background an everyday setting that Uh, everybody can identify with hmm? if you look at the upanishads and uh, i'm picking up the upanishads because gita belongs to the class of literature called vedant and uh, besides the gita vedant uh, includes upanishads so if you take upanishads there the disciple is already almost uh, if i may use the word converted and it's not too difficult preaching to the converted right the disciple has come to the teacher on his own is already asking a very sublime uh, very profound questions so the disciple has already done more than half of the job of the teacher the disciple is not only not reluctant but is actively willing to receive guidance and we do not see that much is at stake for the disciple the disciple only stands to gain the disciple says i have come to you i want knowledge and the teacher says fine i see that you are a nice young sincere fellow i'll speak to you so it's a very pleasant setting hmm? pleasant idyllic and 
there is hardly any stress there right and in contrast to the upanishads in the bhagavad gita the the recipient of the discourse is not very willing in fact he is quite uh, resistant hmm? he is resistant to the point that at a couple of places he almost accuses the teacher krishna of misguiding him and that is understandable because a lot is at stake for arjun he is uh, fighting and he is being told to to actually kill his his brothers friends relatives teacher yes, all the people he has been very closely related to right so so this is something that uh, the common man can more easily identify with on one hand there is wisdom and knowledge in the form of krishna on the other hand there is there is attachment there is fear and a lot of social conditioning if you look at arjun how is it using what kind of arguments does he resist krishna it's quite interesting in the first chapter itself he says if i fight then there will be trouble related to caste hmm? that's one of the first arguments that arjun presents also it appears arjun does not uh, think too highly of women hmm? he says women will go astray and will get corrupted if all the men folk perish so arjun is talking of caste arjun is talking condescendingly of women and arjun appears uh, quite superstitious too he says if out of uh, pratilom meeting you have uh, people being born then uh, they will not be able to partake in certain rituals that yes, offer uh, peace to the souls of the dead ancestors okay sir hmm? and krishna has to fight all of this so if you see who is it that arjun is representing arjun is representing the common man the common man not only of those times but the common man of today actually ha huh? the common man who is superstitious and also another thing that arjun is quite uh, worried of is reputation Huh? he says what will what will happen to me what will people think of me so arjun is the common man who who is in who is in knots of familial attachment hmm? who values blood relations a lot 
who has a certain attitude towards women hmm? who has a certain attitude towards caste right who is superstitious so that's the tough nut krishna is dealing with because arjun represents the common man of today therefore all the things that krishna tells arjun are applicable to and useful for the common man of today that's why i say that the gita is a more useful scripture than the others we have even in vedant are you getting it these are yes, the sir. problems that people face today right so the problems yes, of arjun the mindset of arjun the situation and the attitude of arjun is the attitude of today arjun is attached yes, who is sir. not hmm arjun does not know what to do and that kind of dilemma is yes, ubiquitous sir. who is not torn between choices we all are right yes sir so we all are arjuns yes sir hmm? and arjun has been deeply socially conditioned oh so we all are yes sir right arjun carries a certain uh, uh, attitude towards the various castes and the other gender so do we all hmm? so the problems that arjun is representing are problems of this age as well that's why the solution that krishna offers in the form of gita is a solution to this age as well you get it arjun is not talking of problems that existed then and do not exist today all the problems that arjun has are problems of today as well are they not hmm so so that's the reason why the the message of the gita is so timeless right as long as there is the mind the mind will create distinctions boundaries needless separations in the form of caste in the in the form of uh, religious denominations or gender is an all time thing we all know and obviously the first separation is my family versus the rest of the world so so arjun is thinking of all those things and even when you talk of your family there is the core inner family and then the extended family so on one hand arjun has to think of uh, his wife uh, and the way she was ridiculed and uh, humiliated Uh, so he he cannot uh, uh, let go of that uh, memory that scarring memory mm? on the other hand he also has fond memories related to bhishma pitama uh, who who brought him up or oh, the the grand grand daddy uh, who would uh, who would play with arjun the kid ha huh? and uh, droned the teacher and arjun was a little boy when he was sent to acharya drone and uh, arjun does not know look at him he has he has the agonies and sufferings Mm, that his brothers went through lakshagraha is something he cannot forget he cannot forget 
the several years, more than a decade, they spend in the forest, and then the year they spent in hiding incognito. He cannot forget all those things, and he cannot forget the injustice he thinks uh, the Kauravs are uh, meeting out to him. He cannot forget all those things, and there are memories from the other side as well. And this is the de facto situation of every worldly man, right? Yes, sir. Sometimes on one side there is the wife, on the other side there is the brother. That's a very common situation, is it not? Yes, sir. Every household has this story, right? The wife versus the brother and the man in the middle is simply stuck or you could say torn. Yes, sir. So, if you can understand the situation of Arjun, you will immediately say, oh, that's not his situation, that's my situation. Okay. Not his, but mine. Arjun used to be very angry at Duryodhan and the rest of the Kauravs. And time and again he said, let the battle begin. I'll, I'll destroy them in a moment. Hmm? And that was before the battle actually began. And now that the battle is about to begin, Arjun has cold feet. He tells Krishna, I cannot even lift the Gandiv, huh? the bow. So that's a situation we all experience, right? Don't we? What appears very attractive one moment, very compelling one moment, becomes a horrible thing to do when the moment really comes. And so, even before you go into the solutions that Krishna is offering, you must go into the situation Arjun is in. The more you see your own predicament in Arjun, the more you see your own face in Arjun, the more useful the Bhagavad Gita will be to you. And I'll repeat, Arjun is very relatable. Very relatable. Though the irony has been that people talk of what Shri Krishna says, they do not talk of the one to whom Shri Krishna says all those things. And that's the reason why the message of Krishna often goes wasted upon most people. Unless you become the one to whom those words are addressed, how will those words ever reach you? And you don't have to actually become that one, you are that one, you are Arjun. The Gita is addressed to you, but people do not go through the right process when they are with the Gita. They start thinking that of utmost importance is Krishna's message. No, this will sound surprising, but even more important than Krishna's message is your honest admission that you are Arjun. If you are not Arjun, then Krishna might be lobbing gems and diamonds, but you will not be able to take them, lap them, because they will not be for you. Right? Hmm? What's of more use to you? A random 
packet of diamonds or just one diamond in a packet with your name please tell me please tell me what is of more value to you an entire shop of jewelry or just one item huh a simple ring or a chain with your name on it please tell me that entire shop of diamonds might have great value but it has no value for you because oh great things so what you don't get anything from there that's the reason why the world has failed gita the gita is there but you are not arjun so the gita does not come to you a great packet of valuable diamonds has arrived but it does not carry your name so you get nothing from that or do you get anything no nothing first of all ensure that you are arjun hmm yes sir writing your name is very important one fellow actually flunked the exams i'm talking to a student so this example might be relevant he wrote a great answer sheet for 3 hours and then submitted it without mentioning his name or roll number that's what we do to the gita as well a great scripture but without your name is of no use to you again and again ask yourself what is my problem why must i go to the gita is the message of krishna relevant to me at all the process must be inside out gita is not a general purpose medicine you must know your ailment a bit clearly and then you will find krishna talking to you in a very personal way hmm? and that's the reason i love the gita its utility its relatability huh? truth coming down to speak to you truth coming close to you to hold your hand it's another matter that we still manage to evade the truth but the gita is such a moving document of the compassion the truth exhibits the disciple is unwilling also probably not exactly competent and yet the teacher in his compassion is continuously at the disciple
trying this way, that way. And it's a very human thing, you know, when you look at the very effort that Krishna is making. It's a very human thing. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You come across Krishna less as somebody omnipotent and more as somebody experiencing very carnal helplessness. In Gita, there is hardly any omnipotence or extraordinariness displayed by Krishna. No, you don't see that. Instead, several times in each chapter, we see how helpless Krishna is. Yes, sir. We find the greatest arguments falling flat. We find ignorance and attachment defeating the highest words possible to be uttered. We find weakness lording over strength exactly because it is weak. Srimad Bhagavad Gita is an epic struggle and Krishna is the struggler. So you can relate with Krishna as well. There is a time when you are Arjun and you are being helped. And there comes a time when you are Krishna and you are trying to help. And you find your attempts to help all, all hitting a dead wall. Everything that you throw at the other one so that he might be helped, bounces back at you. I have often been moved to tears when I see how hard Krishna is trying. And one feels like asking, why must the right thing be so difficult? Why must ignorance and nonsense be so powerful? How is being stupid an advantage. And it indeed is in this world. But why must it be so? One, one feels like questioning the entire order of existence itself. The ending has a bit of romance in it. Arjun yields, Krishna succeeds. Uh, that's a bit fairy taleish. Does not always happen. But that's probably needed huh? to enhance the utility of the Gita. People anyway don't want to come to knowledge. And if you have a scripture that depicts knowledge failing in a worldly battlefield, 
then people will have an additional reason to not to come to knowledge. So, Krishna had to succeed and Arjun had to win the war. Though that might not always happen. It, it, it all tugs at your heartstrings. Huh? It's actually a song, Gita. A song as much of melancholy as of wisdom. Yes, sir. I, I love this song. Yes. So, thank you, sir, for the valuable time for this session. This was all from my end. We are highly obliged to have you here, sir.